Hi and welcome to RC Modders and this is the second video in the series which I'm doing on converting the Bruder Cat Excavator. Since the last video I have refined this cylinder a little bit and I'll just explain what I've done. So I ended up putting a slightly longer shaft in because I hadn't calculated this extra distance here which isn't actually used so I think it ended up at about 131 millimeters long. I've put electrical tape around the inside here holding the gearbox to the bit of plastic. That seems to stop it moving around. And in the rest of this video I'm going to show how I added limit switches and hooked it up to radio control. The first thing which I had to think about was the wiring to make those limit switches work. I've come up with a schematic which I think could work. So on here I've drawn one of my pictures and I'll try and explain how it works. First of all, in terms of the components, we've got a 6 plus channel receiver, speed controller, battery, two micro switches, two diodes, and the motor. The way that this works, and I'll explain it in the forward direction, so hopefully this will make sense, is we have the speed controller sending positive current down this red line here, through to the micro switch with the micro switches when they're in the open position they connect the two outer terminals so the current is flowing straight through into the motor and obviously the same on the negative when the arm reaches the top of its travel and pushes the lever down what will happen is actually these two here will then connect the way that diodes work is that they only allow the current to go one way and the way that this diode is set it's only allowing the electricity to flow backwards if you like. What will happen is as that is pushed down it will connect here and the diode will block the current trying to pass across here. That's all well and good but actually I want to be able to move the arm the other way. So, so when the direction of the current is reversed on the speed controller i.e. you're going backwards what will happen is the current will flow through here as it did when it was the other way around but what is now the negative side of the motor will be able to flow straight through this diode back to the speed controller and you'll have a completed circuit obviously the same thing happens the other way around so that is the theory in terms of the actual parts that I'll be using I'm going to be using this 10 channel lemon receiver for an excavator you only need six channels another one of these very cheap 10 amp speed controllers 7.2 volt battery two 3 amp diodes two very small micro switches and obviously the actuator that we made last time for the time being i'm going to be using my spectrum 10t transmitter a couple of reasons for that first of all i'm able to set the spring on the left hand stick this is usually the throttle stick on an aircraft transmitter and normally it isn't sprung but it is in this case so we have both sides sprung and my intention is that the up and down arm here will move this arm backwards and forwards left and right will be the raising and lowering of the bucket this one here up and down will be the whole arm lifting up and down left and right will be the swivel the other reason for using this transmitter is it's quite easy to set different profiles and when it's in digging mode it will be as I just explained when we're in moving along mode there'll be a flick of the switch and this stick here will change into controlling the tracks so backwards forwards left and right etc just before I go any further I just wanted to say a big thanks to everybody who subscribed and given me thumbs up this really does help encourage me with what I'm doing I'm particularly fond of the comments that I get and I like to hear the ideas that you've got and suggestions as to what I should do next and in particular when you're pointing me at videos that either you or other people have done that might help me with the next bit. My son has just helped me start a Twitter account and it'll be really interesting to see how that works with the channel. If you're on that platform it will be really great to hear from you on there as well. On with the build. As far as possible I'm trying not to take this apart until or unless I have to. With this arm here, and I didn't realise this when I was taking the black bits out, you can actually pull the sides apart and it comes out quite easily. I may end up putting a shaft in to hold it all together, but while I'm building it, it's quite convenient. I have already soldered up the wires for 
one of the micro switches and mounted it in place. In order to get it into the place where I wanted it, what I was able to do was to hold the micro switch where I wanted it and use a drawing pin to push into the side and it made a little white mark in the plastic here and I was able then to drill it. In order to make the second hole I actually drilled through the side here and I was able to put the drill bit through the other hole. I used longish 2mm bolts and the bottom one is held in position with a nut. I cut the wires quite long and was able to thread through the main arm and I've made a couple more holes so that I can get the wires into the main body of the excavator. Inside the cover here it looks rather as if the rats have been at it and that's where I've taken out this piece here so that I can get to the inside and I literally just went around with a small drill bit making holes and then going around with the drill again and I was able just to pull it out. Obviously I'm going to tidy this up but I don't need to do that right now. The other thing which I did was I drilled the hole here using a spade drill and I went straight the way through until I was able to come out the other side inside. You can't see it with the camera because I can't quite get the angle but what that means is it means the wire is going to be coming straight out here. The next thing for me to do is to wire up the micro switch for the other side which which is going to be the down one because this one here activates as the arm comes up part here actually pushes against it. I was able to get it into the right position basically by listening for the click. If I find that I need to adjust it afterwards all that I'll need to do is to make this hole here slightly bigger and then I'll be able to move it up and down and then I'll put a nut on the other side to secure it in place. Now the place where this second one needs to go is a fairly hard place to get to and it's about here so I've got to remove this piece of plastic I'll just do that so having removed all the plastic you end up with a space like that always remembering that it's the top hole that locates yep, so the micro switch is going to want to go in a place which is about there you can hear it clicking at its extreme so to know where to drill the hole I'm going to use my drawing pin trick push it through one of the holes like so and then if I push really hard now you can't see the camera but there's the very faintest white mark just there let's draw that see if I got it in the right place so just hold it in with the screwdriver for a moment and it seems to be clicking just before the end of the travel so that looks pretty perfect. I'll just make the other hole and get it screwed in. I can now come away from this micro switch and actually start installing this one, the one with the wires, and I'm going to need to make sure that the wires are all in a place so that A, I can actually get it to fit and B, it isn't going to foul on the arm moving. I can already see I'm going to need to move it around a little bit. So there we have it, the second micro switch installed. It's worth putting one nut on because there's quite a bit of vibration from the motor etc. So I've got one nut on this one here and then I've got a nut on this one here at the back. And then if you listen carefully, there's a click as it gets into its travel there. And the other way there so we stand half a chance of it working hopefully you can see that I just used my one half millimeter bit draw two holes and then sawed with it between the two so we have a tie wrap round here it seems to be out of the way and it's pulled quite tight over the top and it doesn't feel as if it can come off I made a hole in here for the wire to go through because otherwise it will pinch at the top of the travel. Push the tire up down. It's not stopping anything from moving. Snip that. Plug the shaft onto the motor. I can. Set. A nice tight fit which is not a bad thing I'll just leave a tiny gap there 
Right, overnight I've been doing some tidying up, so I've been around the edges of the inside of this bay with a Stanley knife, and that is now tidy, and I've hoovered it out inside, because it's better not to be working in a mess. I've soldered on a JST plug to the end of the wire, which is going to the actuator. Tempting as it is to solder straight onto the speed controller, this actually will allow me to take parts out, etc. later on. The receiver's been bound to the transmitter. And I've named the model on the transmitter. Because I'm going to end up with a load of these speed controllers, I think that I'm going to label them, so I'll just get some tape around there. And having looked it up, I can now see that this arm here, which is the one that we're controlling, is referred to as a dipper and the cylinder that we're moving is called the dipper cylinder. I'm going to label this one dipper. If I'm having problems later down the line fixing it or whatever or something's not working this will make it a little bit quicker. On the transmitter I'm going to be using this stick here up and down to control the dipper which corresponds to the elevator plug on the receiver. So I'll just put that in. With the wiring and the components, I found the hard way that you need to start as you mean to go on, otherwise you just end up with a complete spaghetti of wires. So the receiver actually goes quite nicely just about there, and I'm using double-sided foam tape. That actually goes quite nicely over the aerial. One of the things to remember is that once I start introducing more speed controllers, only one of them can power the receiver. I may end up powering the receiver differently using a beck or something, but we'll see. So that's going to go there. The switch on the top here is for having a brake. I certainly don't want to have a brake where I have to double tap the stick every time I want to change direction. So that's left to the factory default towards the outside. Once I start installing more in, I'm probably going to end up with cable ties keeping everything tied in there. But for now, and for this initial test, I'll just leave it like that. For convenience, I'll just leave the switch out here for the time being. Again, when the model's finished, I'll find a good place to have the on-off switch, which might actually be underneath here or something, I'm not sure. Let's just give it a quick test. So if I push the stick up, and it reaches its top point and that is the absolute maximum that that could travel so I've got the micro switch for that direction in the right place and if I go the other way it stops down there which is also just off the maximum that it will be able to travel anyway and if I move the stick a tiny bit you can see it moves slowly And if I pull the stick the whole way down, it's fast. So in conclusion to this video, I think that I've achieved everything which I set out to do, i.e. I've managed to control the dipper cylinder with variable speed control. I've managed to put the limiters on using the micro switches and I've got it moving the whole of the travel distance. The speed I'm happy with, I could obviously get it faster or slower with a trade-off with torque by using different size gearboxes. The cable ties at each end here seem to be holding it in place nicely. I think it was a lot more fiddly and more difficult than I thought it would be and obviously you could just go out and buy a toy that would achieve a lot of this but I don't think that that's really the point. I need to make something similar for each of the other three. I was half tempted to only use a single cylinder to lift this middle one here because I'm going to have the challenge of the two sides not necessarily going at the same speed as each other but I'm going to try and figure that out. I'm waiting for parts to complete the other cylinders so the next video in this series is probably going to be looking at powering the tracks and doing so in such a way that I can have continuous rotation on the top here 
without twisting wires so that's something else for me to think about if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and until the next time thank you very much for watching